This right here is our new piano rig. A few years ago, I gutted an old Lester piano, this old Lester piano, and started building a piano rig that I had hoped would be at least as half as good as it is today. And I wanna show you around. If you wanna see that gutted piano video that I made, uh, go check that out, links below. Let's go. Today this piano station has three major components. The three major components are the Nord Stage 3. We also have the iPad running Sunday Keys by Sunday Sounds. And then we have the Studio Logic SL88 Studio, which is a MIDI keyboard. And this one is fully weighted and feels great. The Nord is connected directly to the Studio Logic via MIDI, and it is on channel one of the Studio Logic. And the iPad is connected to the Studio Logic uh, via USB and that's connected to channel two. What's great about the Studio Logic is you have four inputs that you can use on this board and you can isolate them or use them in combination with each other, which is really cool. So we use the, the, the sound engine from the Nord most of the time, whether that be, you know, keyboards, pianos, upright pianos, pads, all kinds of things like that. And we especially use this one because this is the 73 key for organ. The reason why we went with this keyboard instead of the full 88 is because of cost, first of all, they're really expensive. And the second is space savings. A side benefit of going with the 73 key Nord is that you get a key bed that is not weighted. So it makes it great for organ, like I said, but the way we connect this, we actually use the key bed of the Studio Logic because it is weighted when we want the weighted feel. We run the sound directly out of the Nord instead of it all going into one channel, the Nord is mixed separately from what's going on on the iPad. And we could use them in combination as well, like I said, uh, with the Studio Logic. But again, they're separate, like separate channels on the board front of house. Again, the SL88 is an 88 key key bed that's fully weighted. It feels amazing. It has a ton of space. You can put a phone here. It has a magnetic strip in this section of the keyboard and you can like put all kinds of things. They have stuff that you can use with this. Uh, also an iPad will actually sit here really nice and not fall off. Uh, if all you have is a, uh, a this keyboard with the iPad, you can just sit the iPad here or you can connect some kind of like stand. But the way we have it set up, I have this wooden beam, this two by four that I stained that's going across that the, and I took the top off the piano so that way the Nord can sit right on top and this, uh, two by four is keeping the Nord from sitting right on top of the Studio Logic. And I can, like I said, I can still slide an iPad or a phone right here because there's still space, but I have the iPad on a stand. It's a lockable iPad stand. You can turn it vertical or horizontal. And of course it has a little hole here in the, the bottom to where you can connect your, your power cables. And I just uh, screwed that into the wood of the two x four that's holding up the Nord. This two x four is not fully attached to the piano itself, to the piano shell itself. It's sitting on other pieces of wood that I did attach to the inside of this. So that way, if I did want to pull the Nord off and use it separately, or put in another keyboard here temporarily or whatever it may be, we can pull this completely apart. So it's a little bit modular uh, when it comes to being able to use this piano as a stand for any rig. Let's go into Sunday Keys. The iPad's connected to an Anchor USB hub and that USB hub has two USB-A ports on it, one USB-C port, it has power in and then it also has like a HDMI and SD card reader, but we don't use that for this rig. But I have one USB going to, it's like a USB to printer cable, <laughs> going to, that's what I call it, going to the Studio Logic. And then the other one is going to a, a USB interface that's underneath here that's attached with some of the hardware that was with the piano itself. I think it's the hardware that held on the, uh, the, the, the board that was in front of the soundboard whatever that board is called, the footboard or whatever. So I use that to actually attach this USB interface and that's a Personas USB interface. So that's how we're getting our audio out of the key, 
Sunday Keys app uh, going to that USB interface and then that's going to, a, to, to the board via XLR. Inside of the app itself, it's really cool because Sunday Keys allows you to make set lists and then in those set lists, you can have your, okay, so they call them patches and you can build out a new patch for each song if you want to. So let's just use this chapel service as an example of what I'm talking about. I, I think this is so cool because like this could be song one, this chapel service patch could be song one. And then my default could be the first verse or chorus or whatever, whatever we're starting with in that song. So uh, let's see, let's play an F sharp. Maybe the song starts on a one with like a big swell, right? And then the next part, those pads go down and then your piano comes up like you saw. So maybe song one wouldn't sound like that, but <laughs> that's probably more like song three kind of thing. It doesn't matter how you start, you can start however you want. All right, let's see what Snapshot 3 has. Brings that pad up a little bit. Snapshot 4, brings the pads all the way down. Now it's just piano. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that's how we would use that. We would set up our patches as our songs and then set up our snapshots as parts of the song. You don't have to, you can use it however you want. Say the next song is in G and we needed some kind of transition, some seamless transition. What's cool about the Sunday Keys app is you can run a pad while you're transitioning, you can run that pad, you can even change it. You can, there's several different types of pads that you can use, which is really cool. I, I just, I love this. You could turn the pad volume on and off or up and down and essentially on and off. Change the brightness, shimmer, like th this app is insane. It can be its own, like I said, I, I'm gonna say it over and over again. It's gonna be its own piano rig if you want it to be. You don't need the Nord. You don't need to spend all this money on this unless you just really want it. Also, I connected a 100 watt power supply to this Anchor USB hub. And the reason why is because not only will it power the iPad, but it'll also give us power to the Studio Logic, which is really cool. Even if we're not using the iPad and it's unplugged, it will still provide the power to the Studio Logic. But I do still have the power cable back there in the rig, um, in the internals of the rig, just in case something happens to the hub or whatever, I can connect that power here and then we can use the uh, Nord as our main sound engine with SL88. If for some reason something happened to the SL88, guess what? We can just go straight to the Nord. So there's a lot of redundancies in this setup, in this rig, and I love it that way because there, it also gives us a lot of options. So inside Lester, we have some cable management going on. It's not the greatest, but all, most of our cables are coming in from this right side, from the iPad and other stuff like that. And you see these piano, tr or piano, you see these cable tracks that I have that I've put on the inside. I've attached them to the inside edge of Lester. You can see it on this side as well. So they're just right there on the inside edge. So that way it just manages the cables that are coming around and wherever we need them to go. And most of them are going to this bottom section here, this whole section down here. I don't know what else to call it. We have, of course, our audio cables going into those direct boxes and then everything's going through this hole that goes that we drilled into the bottom of the piano that goes under the stage to our stage box and all that this is the audio box that the ipad audio is going to via usb and that's the clamp that i was talking about pretty cool but and then I, oh yeah i have power this is just an old school power strip something you would see behind your mom's tv and see how it looks it just looks so much better when the soundboard is still in it yes it does make it heavier, but I don't care. It looks cool. And these are the pedals that I was talking about. They are due for an upgrade already, even though we pretty much just started using them. But that middle one, the Roland, is going to the Nord. I need to get the Nord pedal. This is the expression pedal for the Nord. And then this is the pedal that's going to Studio Logic. A couple other things we have on this piano rig is a talkback mic. This is the Beta 87A. We are also using the 
Behringer P16 for personal inner monitors. Uh, that's pretty much it. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is this is our piano rig. This is the way it is for now, but it is gonna change and evolve over time, just like everything else does in our churches. Stage designs and all kinds of stuff like that. It all changes, doesn't it? So uh, subscribe, stay up to date with what we're doing here and you'll see how this changes. Trust me, I will let you know. I have links below to all the stuff that I talked about if you're interested in any of that. Some full compass leaks, some Amazon links, uh, for some of the stuff that you can't get on Full Compass. And feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, I read the comments, most of them anyway, and ask me questions if for some reason I didn't answer it or wasn't clear about it in this overview. But thank you so much for watching this video. Remember, great worship leaders are always learning. Have a great day, guys.